today uh, we will be finishing module 3 and uh, as, as is typically done, I will do, I'll be doing some practice problems. Now in module 3 we talked about, about basically about vector integration and then we talked about some basic operations involving matrices and determinants. Okay. In this, uh, in these practice problems, I will be focusing on vector integration okay. and uh, matrix operations and determinants and all will be, will be part of the module 4 also. So, so there we will take up practice problems on, on the matrix operations and determinants. Okay. So, so I will just write down a few problems that we will work out today. Okay. So, the first problem has to do deal with, with line integrals. Okay. So, what you have to do is to calculate work done by f of x y. So, the f of x y is a force okay. in uh, displacing a particle from A to B along two paths C1 and C2 which will be shown in the figure. I will just show you the paths. Okay. The paths are shown here. So, this is the x axis, this is the y axis and uh, you have a point 1, 0 and the point B is minus 1, 0 and your, you have two paths going from A to B. The path C1 is this is C1 and the path C2 goes right along the x axis from A to B. So, this is point A, this is point B. Okay. So, what you have to do is to calculate the work done and uh, there are two, two forms of, uh, of, of the forces when f of x y is. So, in the first case, I take f of x y is equal to 3 x y minus 1 into i hat plus 3 by 2 x square plus 4 y square into j hat. And in the second case, the force is given by y times i minus x square times j. Okay. So, uh, this is the statement of the problem and uh, I just want you to you know understand what we are trying to do in this problem. So, the, the, the problem is, is you are taking this particle from A to B and you are taking it along two different paths. This is C1 which is along a circle of unit radius and C2 which goes right along the x axis. Okay. So, just to emphasize this radius equal to 1, radius equal to 1. So, there are two possible paths going from A to B and I am giving two possible forces. Okay. So, for each force you calculate the work done along each path. Okay. Work done when the particle is moved along each path. To solve this, let us take the, let us take the first force. So, uh, the solution I will write it in red solution. Okay. So, f, so the first case f is equal to 3 x y minus 1 times i plus 3 by 2 x square plus 4 y square into j. Okay. So, the first term 3 x y minus 1 is the x component of the force and the second term 3 x square plus uh, 3 by 2 x square plus 4 y square is the y component of the force. Okay. So, that is that is just what we had here. 
Okay. Now, the first thing you can do is to check for path independence. Path dependence. Okay. And to do that, you take the derivative, you take the derivative of the x component of the force with respect to y. So, do f x by do y is equal to, so the x component of the force is 3 x y minus 1. So, the derivative with respect to y will just be 3 x. Okay. Then you do the derivative of the y component of the force with respect to x. Okay. And uh, when you take that differential, again you get a derivative of 3 x. So, so, since both these are equal, you conclude that this is path independent. path independent and uh, so what you would expect is that the work, <coughs> work done in going along path C1 should be the same as the work done in going along path C2. So, for this particular force, so for the first force the work done in going along path C1 and work done in going along path C2 will be the same. So, so what we saw is that the work done for the first force, for the first case of the force the work done does not depend on which path you take. Okay. And uh, for convenience, I will calculate this work using path C2. So, wh what do we know about path C2? So, so use path C2 to calculate work. So, so once again, just let us remind ourselves, you have x and you have y, uh, x and y and you have this point. 1 0 and you have this point here minus 1 0 and the path C 2 goes along the x axis this way. So, along along C 2 okay, y equal to 0. So, I can write integral uh, or work is equal to integral from and uh, x goes from. So, uh, x goes from 1 to minus 1 and so uh, dy is also 0. Okay, so, so, the only term that will contribute will be will be the the x component. So, that is so uh, now now I will get 3 x y minus 1 d x, okay. but since y equal to 0. So, I have 3 into x into 0 minus 1 dx. Okay. So, uh, remember d y is 0. So, I do not have any 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 term involving d y. Okay. So, then I just I just get uh, minus 1 d x this is equal to integral minus 1 d x from 1 to minus 1. So, so we are going from 1 to minus 1 in x. So, so x is going from 1 to minus 1. So, this is equal to 2. Okay, so that solves the first part, and uh, and you know you can you can verify you can verify it's a little more tedious, but uh, you can verify that even if you take path C one, you'll get the same answer. Okay, but uh, I I won't do that here. But in the second case of the force, okay, we will we will look at path C one. Okay, so let's look at the second case. So in the second case, we have the force given by. minus x square j. Okay. Now, now you calculate do f x by do y. Okay. So, if you take the derivative of this this first term with respect to y, you just get x and do f y by do x, this is equal to minus 2 x. Okay. So, clearly these two are not equal. So, this is path dependent. Okay. So, now, now let us use the let us use the along path C 2 to work done is equal to integral again again you will have 1 to minus 1 and you just have the x component times dx 
but if you look at the x component okay so you have x into now y y is 0 as we saw in the last in the in the earlier part of the problem okay and you have dx so the work done is 0 so so along along this path c2 you don't do any work and just to remind you have c2 is the path going from 1 0 to minus 1 0 along the axis c1 is the path going along the circle okay so the work done along path c2 equal to 0 so what about what about the work done along path c1 okay so so now now you have to parameterize this path c1 so in other words you have to somehow write this path so 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 we have we have f of xy is equal to xy i minus x square j okay now in this xy coordinates this path is not easy to parameterize okay so what you have to do is to go to spherical polar coordinates okay and uh, so so you use or, or in this case it is actually plane polar coordinates plane polar coordinates what is done is you go from you go from from x and y to r and theta so so instead of having a point x y you 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 describe by r and theta and you use x equal to r cos theta y equal to r sin theta why does plane polar coordinates help along c1 c1 r equal to 1 constant <coughs> so so uh, along this path uh, your uh, r does not change at all so so r is fixed at constant so the only change is due to theta okay and uh, what you can do is you can write this integral now and so you substitute for x substitute for y okay and uh, you also have to you also have to consider this uh, so 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 if i write w is equal to integral xy dx plus integral or minus in this case so there is a minus sign there is a minus x square so I will put a minus sign so minus integral x square dy okay this is along path c1 okay now now what I can I can use is that uh, since x is r cos theta and r is fixed okay I can write dx is equal to sin theta d theta with a minus sign so minus sin theta d theta and dy is equal to cos theta d theta okay so both dx and dy can be expressed in terms of theta okay and similarly I can express x and y in terms of theta again r equal to 1 I am taking r equal to 1 so so I can calculate the work and I will get the ex expression I will get it as an integral now theta along along this path so if you look at theta here okay theta goes from 0 to pi okay theta is defined to go from 0 to pi so what you have is integral from 0 to pi now x times y x times y is nothing but uh, cos theta times uh, sin theta okay so it is cos theta times cos sin theta and then uh, and then you have a dx so you will get another sin theta so what you have is minus cos theta sin square theta that comes from from here and the other term minus x square that is uh, x square will give you uh, a cos square theta 
and dy will give you another cos theta. So, you have minus cos cube theta the whole thing d theta and uh, you can simplify this in this case in this case if I take cos theta outside then I get sin square theta plus cos square theta. So, I get minus integral 0 to pi cos theta d theta. So, what is this value equal to? So, this is equal to so integral of cos theta is sin theta. So, minus sin theta from 0 to pi and this is equal to 0. So, the work done is actually 0. Okay. So, what you notice is that uh, you got 0 work along both these paths C1 and C2 okay, even though your force was actually path dependent. Okay. So, the force is path dependent, but for these two paths and, and I emphasize it is only these two paths that you got the same work done. Okay. So, in both these in both these cases the work done was 0. Okay. So, that uh, completes the first problem. Now, I will do the second problem. Okay. So, the, the second problem that I want to give okay, that, that involves a volume integral. Okay, so, so, this involves a volume integral. Okay, so, here provided that uh, the wave function of 2 p x orbital of hydrogen atom is, is uh, given by psi of 2 p x. This is proportional to r e to the minus r by 2 a into sin theta cos phi. Okay. Now, what you are asked to do is to calculate calculate a volume integral and that volume integral I will just is calculate psi 2 p x square d cube r. So, overall Okay, so, you calculate the volume over the entire three dimensional space. Okay. So, I uh, will just give you a little bit of background about this problem. So, I have expressed this wave function okay, in terms of r theta and phi. So, so it is already expressed in spherical polar coordinates. So, so I will just I will just mention it here. So, we have used spherical polar coordinates. So, what are spherical polar coordinates? So, so if you have if you have if you have a coordinate system where these are the axis x, y, z, okay, then if there is a point x, y, z are the coordinates of that point, okay. So, instead of using x, y, z coordinates, you use different coordinates, you use spherical polar coordinates. So, where this is given by r, okay, r is the distance of the point from the origin, and then your theta is the angle that that this r makes with the z axis and phi is the angle that a projection of r onto the x y plane makes with the x axis so these three these three uh, these three coordinates they define what is the usual spherical polar coordinates now, what are the conversions used? So, you can use uh, so, so r theta phi can be expressed in terms of x y z as follows. So, I can write x as r sin theta cosine of phi, y is expressed as r sin theta sin of phi and z is expressed as r cosine theta. Okay. 
So, and, uh, and the other thing that uh, you need to know for this okay, is that d cube r can be written as r square sin theta dr d theta d phi. So, so it is, uh, so when you do a volume integral, you have a inter integral over 3 variables okay, and you have a, so this is dr d theta d phi, but uh, when you write d cube r, d cube r is same as dx into dy into dz. So, this is equal to dx dy dz. Okay. When you convert it to spherical polar coordinates, then uh, you do not just write dr d theta d phi, you have to have, have this factor of r square sin theta, you have to have a multiplicative factor of r square sin theta. So, so with all this information, we can easily go ahead and, uh, and uh, calculate this integral, just a uh, little bit more information. So, the range of variables, so uh, I will just, so 0 less than equal to r less than infinity, 0 less than equal to theta less than pi, 0 less than equal to phi less than 2 pi. So, these are the these are the ranges of variables. So, if you want to span the entire space, these are the allowed values of r theta and phi in the spherical polar coordinate. So, so, so 0 less than r going to infinity as r becomes larger, you go more and more outside, you go more and more further from the from the origin. Okay. So, so with this information, we can go ahead and uh, calculate this integral. Okay. So, let us uh, let us ca calculate integral integral psi square d cube r and uh, you might recall from your quantum mechanics course that uh, this is what you need to calculate in order to find out the normalization constant for this for this wave function okay so uh, now 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 we can go ahead we have all the information needed so let's just go ahead and calculate that integral so what we need to do is integral psi 2 p x square d cube r. Okay. So, I will just go over all space. So, let us just go and copy it down. So, you have r square e to the minus. So, when you square this, you will get r square e to the minus r by a 0, uh, r by a. So, you have r square e to the minus r by a. I will put the, I will put the limits in a bit. So, r goes from 0 to infinity, theta goes from 0 to pi and phi goes from 0 to 2 pi. Okay. Now, I, I just substituted one part and then I have a square of this. So, sin square theta cos square phi. So, times And then, and then I had a d cube r, I had a d cube r here. So, the d cube r is given by r square sin theta dr d theta d phi. Okay. Now, now what you, what you can do is you can separate the integral into 3 integrals. So, I will write, so you have 0 to 2 pi. So, 0 to 2 pi is the range for phi, for the variable phi. And uh, the only function of phi is cos square phi. Okay, and then this will multiply an integral over theta, which goes from zero to pi. And uh, now you have a sine square theta into sine theta. So you have sine cube theta. And finally, you have an integral over r, which goes from zero to infinity. And what you have is r square into r square, so that is r to the power 4 and you have e to the minus r by a dr. So, you have to do each of these, each of these integrals you have to do, each of these is a simple uh, one dimensional integral okay? and uh, you can, you can do this easily and calculate the values. So, so if you want to do cos square phi d phi, then, then you replace cos square phi by, by uh, by 1 plus cos 2 phi by 2. Okay. So, you, so, when you replace this by 1 plus cos 2 phi by 2, then you do the integral, you will get integral, you will get phi plus sin 2 phi. 
okay so phi by 2 plus sin 2 phi by 4 integral and you put the limits 0 to 2 pi okay so that is this first part the second part the theta part okay that works out to so sin cube theta okay so so if you replace if you replace sin cube theta in terms of uh, sin theta and sin 3 theta okay and then you can you can do the integral i'll just uh, write the the final answer for the integral so you get minus 3 cos theta by 4 plus cos 3 theta by 12 integral from 0 to pi okay and then this last integral i'll write it slightly differently i'll write this as integral now instead of instead of my variable instead of taking my variable as r i'll take my variable as r by a i'll just change my variable from from just r to r by a okay and uh, there's a reason for that so so i'll write this as as a raised to 5 times integral r by a raised to 4 e to the minus r by a d of r by a okay so you can see that i have changed the variable of integration from r to r by a but uh, the limits don't change because when r equal to 0 r by a equal to 0 when r equal to infinity r by a equal to infinity so this is my final expression and uh, you can you can substitute this the this will give you a factor of pi this this particular expression will give you a factor of 4 by 3 okay and uh, finally this this particular expression is a raised to phi and then you have an integral that looks like x raised to 4 e to the minus x dx you have an integral of this from from 0 to infinity and uh, and if you look up uh, this is related to something called a gamma function this is a essentially this is a this is an integral representation of a factorial okay so this is equal to 4 factorial okay so 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 finally what you get you can you can write your expression as so 4 factorial is 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 so if i cancel the 3 then i'll get 1 into 2 into 4 that is 8 8 into 4 32 so i have 32 pi a raised to 5 okay so this is the final expression and you got this by doing this volume integral okay so we'll start module 4 in the next class